So I read from verse 6 of Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing, brothers and sisters. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. Today I want to share a few thoughts with us about five things that I want to share with us. And I believe with these things you're going to be encouraged and strengthened to trust God, to believe God, and to akin to the voice of the Lord. And to release yourself to the peace of God that passes all human understanding. And that's what today I want to talk about the peace of God. The first thing I want to share with us is this. Having peace with God gives us full access to the peace of God. Having peace with God gives us access to the peace of God. There are so many people who want the kind of peace, the kind of peace that we talked about, the shalom, the iron, the, the unmissing, nothing is missing, nothing is broken, everything is perfect, glory to God. You have this confident awareness that all is well in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of pandemonium. That's the peace of God. That's what we're talking about. But we cannot begin to enjoy the peace of God except we have peace with God. It is important to have this foundation. It is important for us to grasp this. That when we have peace with God, automatically we would have the peace of God. Amen. I want to read Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, hallelujah. We say this all the time, we're never justified by the works of righteousness. We're not justified because we've been nice. We're not, we're not justified because we've been good people. We're not justified because we know how to practice Christianity. No, we have been justified by faith. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we are peace with God. Glory to God through our Lord Jesus. We are peace with God. Having been justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him also, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We're talking about well-being this month. And I want to say this. Peace with God is the foundation of our spiritual well-being. Peace with God is the foundation of our spiritual well-being. And the next thing I want to say is this. Our spiritual well-being is the bedrock of our total well-being. And I, I, I would say that again. You need to get this. Having peace with God is the foundation of our spiritual well-being. We're going to talk about all the kind of well-being soon and next week and all of that, but I'll be focusing on spiritual well-being. And that's why I'm talking about peace. Peace with God is the foundation of our spiritual well-being, and our spiritual well-being is the foundation, the ground upon which we can build our entire well-being. In other words, without spiritual well-being, what it, you, you, you know, without spiritual well-being, we shouldn't be talking about all kind of well-being. The spiritual well-being is the 
bedrock of our total well-being if someone understand this uh, and they pay attention to the spiritual well-being i tell you something every other thing will fall in place and every other thing will fall in line and i'm not just talking about psychological well-being i'm not just talking about emotional well-being even financial well-being will fall in line even social well-being will fall in line all well-being will fall in line when we understand that our spiritual well-being is the bedrock of our total well-being and that's what the word shalom actually means well-being also we are peace with god we are peace with god so when we have this peace with god we have access to the peace of god this peace that we read in philippians chapter 4 that passes all human understanding we have access to that peace of god because we have peace with god you know one of the most important thing that can ever happen to you is to have is to know that god is not angry with you one of the most important thing to know in life is that god is at peace with you hallelujah it's to know that you're not fighting God and God is not fighting you. It's to know that you are connected and you are reconciled to God. It's to know that there's no longer any form of animosity between you and God. It's to know that even though our sins separated us from God, then the blood of Jesus has brought us close. This number one piece that you need in your life, the, the most important well-being that I need is to know that I have peace with God. And so there are so many Christians who don't even enjoy that. There are so many Christians who are not enjoying this peace of God. Even though they have peace with God, they are peace with God, they are born again, they are reconciled to God, and yet they are not enjoying the peace of God. Listen to this. The, the second thought I want to share with you is that the salvation that we have gives us unlimited access to God's nature. And God's nature is peace. So God's salvation gives us unlimited, constant access to God's personality, to God's abundance, to God's nature. And if you want to know, God's nature is peace. Amen. So we, we have been reconciled to God. We have no fighting with God. We have been justified by faith. Hallelujah. And so we have access to God and we have the peace of God. We have the peace of God because we are peace with him. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, if you understand that the nature of God is peace, and if you know that peace with God gives you access into everything that God has, I want to tell you something. You are going to have peace in the midst of trouble. You're going to have peace even, every, even when everything is coming against you. You're going to have peace even when it seems that you shouldn't have peace. You're still going to have peace because we are the righteousness of God and we have access to everything that God gives. I like this. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17. Isaiah 32 17. I like this. It says, the work of righteousness will be peace. The work of righteousness. Now, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says we've been justified by faith. The Bible says because we believe God, it's been credited unto us as righteousness. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the work of righteousness will be peace. You know, there's a walk inside of you is the walk of peace. Is the walk of righteousness. The fact that you are you are the righteousness of God. The walk of righteousness will be peace. And the second part says, and the effect of it. The effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Wow. As Christians, we just have so much. You shouldn't live your life running from pillar to post and trying to fix yourself and fret over things that other people fret over and be afraid because of the fear of other people and be confused because of the confusion of other people. Listen to this. We are a different breed. And this isn't, that's not arrogance. It's because we are peace with God. And if we are peace with God, we have the peace of God. And I want to challenge you to enjoy that peace. 
What is the good of having something that you're not enjoying? What is, the, what is the good of having something and continuing to behave as those who don't have anything? The work of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. I speak in the name of the Lord Jesus. That even in the midst of pandemonium, you will, be, you will find calmness and quietness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because the work of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. Assurance that what? Assurance that God is on your side. Assurance that God is keeping you. Assurance that God is working all things together for good. Quietness. Why? Because there might be chaos and pandemonium and things are just, you know, anyhow. But in all of these, you have quietness. This is the work of righteousness. And if someone is here, you're born again, you have the life of Christ in you. You have the spirit of the living God. You are reconciled to God, being justified by faith. You are peace with God and you are the righteousness of God. I want to tell you that the work of that righteousness is peace. And the effect of that righteousness is quietness and assurance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know the beautiful thing I was sharing, you know, on Friday very quickly. Uh, I think it was on Friday that I read this. I can't remember. God has a covenant of peace with us. Now, that is powerful. You know, when we talk about having peace with God, it's not, it's a covenant. In other words, there is a contract. In other words, God, God is committed, come on, listen to this, God is committed to your peace. God is. God is not just going to say, you know what, uh, if I like, I'm going to give you peace. If I don't like, I'm not going to give you peace. It's how I feel that the time is whether you're going to have peace or not. No, 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 no. We have a covenant of peace with God. And that covenant has been delivered and sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have a covenant. So it's a covenant of peace. It's a covenant of peace. Uh, I'm not talking about covenants today. But you see, a covenant is a, it's not just a contract. A covenant is sealed by life. A covenant is sealed by blood. A covenant is a life commitment. You see, the life of a thing is in its blood. And so, the covenant is by the shedding of blood. And that means it's a life covenant. It's something if we are tied. God is committed to your peace. If I, I just pray you grasp this. God is committed to your peace. God is not going to turn his back on you. Never. God is never going to say, you know what? I'm going to allow you to go through some turbulence and it's going to be so scattered. No, 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 no. God has a covenant of peace with us. And when you understand that. You will know that what is inside of you is more important than what is outside of you. When you understand that, then you know that there may be turbulence and chaos and, uh, and, and all of those things. And things might be here and there and there may be bad news and all of that. But you know that you have a covenant of peace with God. It's a covenant sealed, delivered to you and I by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The everlasting sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Gives us this covenant. 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 This covenant is more than a marriage covenant. It's more than a business contract. It's more than a business partnership. No, it's more than that. We're talking about a covenant that is sealed, delivered, procured by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's a covenant of peace. Let me tell you something. No matter what you're feeling right now. No matter how troubled you think you are. No matter how anxious you are because of what is going on around in the world. I want you to know that God is never going to turn his back on you. God is never, never going to turn his back on you. Look at Isaiah 54. 
he says for the mountains shall depart now that's a serious business we haven't heard of so many mountains departing do you know any <laughs> so mountains don't depart easily but the bible says is that even when the mountains depart and the hills be removed my kindness shall not depart from you god is good all the time my kindness shall not depart from you nor shall my covenant of peace be removed let everything be removed let everything be pulled from under us and people, everything becomes unstable let the mountains collapse and be swallowed up. Let the valleys rise suddenly. Let there be floods everywhere and chaos and shouts and everything. Because these are the end times, you know that. God says, even in the midst of that, when the mountains move and the hills move, my kindness shall not depart from you, nor my covenant of peace be removed from you. And that's why there's something on the inside of you that just grabs you this chillness, this realization, this control that some other times people think you are being reckless or people think you don't know what you're doing. No, it's not because of that. It's because you know that you cannot carry yourself. Because you know that you cannot sustain yourself. Ezekiel 37 says 6, 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And, listen to this, it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. God is not changing his mind. God is never turning his back on us. Listen to this. It doesn't matter what people see. We are limited in our interpretation of God. Extremely limited. And most times what we call good might be good and what we call bad might actually be good. We're limited in our understanding of God. And you see, one of the difficulty of humanity is for us to accept our smallness and to accept that on our own way, too tiny, to grasp the fullness of God. So we want to determine the parameters of for what is good, what is bad, without divine framework. Listen carefully to this. God says that he would make a covenant of peace with them, which he has made with us through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it shall be an everlasting covenant, which I want to tell you that the covenant that you have through Jesus is an everlasting covenant. Amen. Amen. Let me share another thoughts with us. So, so what we're saying there is God has a covenant of peace with us. It is still delivered by the blood of Jesus. It's an everlasting covenant of peace. No matter what removes, what turns, no matter what happens, God's peace with us remains and is everlasting. Its kindness will not depart from us and its peace will never be removed from us. Somebody shout yes. Okay, so I said it's delivered by Jesus Christ. And I think before, even though it's a short one, before we move on, I think we need to talk about that. We need to talk about Jesus. You need to understand that the reason why the covenant of peace is so powerful and is eternal, the reason why having peace with God gives you access to everything that God has and including his peace, the reason for that is this, listen, it's because Jesus paid the full price for my peace. Jesus paid every dime, every dollar, every pound, every naira, every ruby, everything that is required, everything that is necessary for my peace. Jesus paid everything in total, not half paid, not 90% paid. He paid it all. Glory to God. He paid it all. He paid it all. He paid everything. You know that's why we always sing songs like Jesus is enough. Christ is enough for me. It's not a lie. What else do we want? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me all again? It's too late. I'm already old because Jesus' blood has been shed. Jesus paid the full price for your peace. 
And so in the midst of the turbulence and whatever is going on in the world right now, I want you to just chill out and relax. And let me add this to it. Why would you carry a burden that somebody is carrying for you? Why? Why would you carry a burden that somebody is carrying for you? You know why? You know why you shouldn't carry the burden? Let's go to Isaiah 53. Jesus paid the full price for your peace. Everything that is required for me to be peaceful, Jesus already done. He's paid the price. He suffered for me. Hallelujah. We know that song. He suffered for me. He suffered. He bled. He died. He was nailed to the cross. What else? Do, listen to this. Listen carefully to this. Satan has no hold on you whatsoever. You don't owe him anything at all. You are not a debtor to Satan. He cannot stand even in the court of justice to put any demand on you because there's nothing that he possibly wants to put on you that Jesus Christ did not completely pay for. If God has nothing else to count against you, can you think about Satan? A anybody understand what I'm saying? If God says, you are my righteousness, I'm not angry with you. If God says you have been accepted in the beloved, if God says all of that, God says you're, you're beautifully and wonderfully and fearfully made, God says all of that, and then you want to bother yourself about Satan and think you owe him anything? No, you don't. If you've ever thought you owed Satan, I want to tell you, you don't. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Surely he has borne our griefs. Surely he carried my sorrow. Carried your sorrow. Carried our sorrows. Five. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. That's when he paid for your peace. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We're talking about well-being. We're not just healed physically. By his wounds we're not just healed physically. You know, don't, don't get it this right. We're healed emotionally, psychologically, mentally. We're healed in all things. The Bible says he's come to bind the broken hearted. When God talks about healing, most listen carefully to this. When God talks about healing, most importantly, he talks about spiritual healing. And after that, he talks about mental, psychological, and emotional healing before you talk about physical healing now listen to this we don't grasp that and people put it on top and people think physical healing is the most important thing no it's spiritual healing and that's why when jesus people will come to jesus with leprosy jesus would tell the guy jesus said your sins are forgiven and people think why is he saying that he said it's easier to say you are ill but i want to tell you the one that is more difficult is the forgiveness of sin listen carefully to the spiritual healing it's above every form of healing and then after that is your mental healing you know why because without your mental healing mental well-being you can fulfill god's purpose that's very very important now i know without your physical healing you struggle to fulfill purpose but i've taught us enough to know that you might have physical problem and still fulfill purpose you can be lame and fulfill purpose you can be blind and fulfill purpose you can be deaf and fulfill purpose but you cannot lose your mind and fulfill purpose mm. and so that should tell you what really matters it's simple logic Isaiah 54, 53, 4 to 5. I want to read NIV. It says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. Anybody really know that song? The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds we are healed. You don't know the song. I sent it to you on WhatsApp. You didn't listen. By his wounds, we are healed. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. The final thought I want to share with us before we pray 
Christ didn't just purchase peace for us. He gives us peace. You know, there's one thing to buy something and keep it. No, he gives it. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Hey, it's peace. Now, if you want to know how the peace of Jesus operates, just remember when he was in the boat and was sleeping and there was pandemonium and the wind was boisterous and Jesus continued to sleep. So that's the kind of peace that he was talking about. Do you get it now? It says, peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Do I give to you? Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Let's bring it back on. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. 1633 John 1633 these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world in the news in the report of men in the report of those who don't have any altar of God's spirit the report of those who oppress with the spirit of Antichrist, in the in the in the report of those whose assignment is to generate and create pandemonium and fear, in the world of those, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the word, there's tribulation. He said, but don't worry about it because I have overcome the word. Wherein is tribulation? In other words, you are above it. True peace is in God. You can't have peace in the world. You can't have peace in a man. You can't have peace in a government. We can see it all over the world. Who here and there, people overtaking things and causing fighting and killing people. You can't have peace in man. Because the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it. Every time you put on the TV and you believe everything that is on it. Ask yourself, the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it. Every time somebody come on with something so beautiful, you need to ask you yourself, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Are they saying the truth or are they packaging their wallets? I don't want to go into all that, but I want to tell you this. In God, there is peace. In Jesus, there is true peace. Hallelujah. Money and material possession cannot buy peace. The peace that we're talking about has been purchased by the blood of Jesus.